Hi everybody, this is Sharon A.K. Harris and I'm going to show you how to use alcohol inks and how to control alcohol ink. Now that's the trick right there. So um, just to let you know before I get going, because I'll forget everything, is that I have a new YouTube channel and it's all about techniques. Starting from how to load your palette all the way up to advanced techniques. But the thing is, it's... Um, it's, they're like 10, 20 minutes long and that's it. So you learn the technique. But let's go, I'm going to show you the technique right now. I will link that in the description area so you can find it right away. Thanks so much. And I'm on Facebook. Enjoy. Just Google me. You'll find me everywhere. So I use, I'm using alcohol. Can you what type of alcohol is it? I'm using 91%. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> alcohol. And um, I'm just going to clean the palette because it's kind of messy. Ordinarily at home, I wouldn't really personally care. But... I just want you all to know what I'm doing. I want to just better. pan the table you while may. you're cleaning. Look at the beautiful designs. This is she just painted literally like so quickly today in different demos. And these she's done, some of them she's done at home, and some of them, the flowers and stuff, were done during the demos. It's like all done with alcohol ink. I can't believe I've tried to do beautiful stuff like that, and it never comes out the same way. All the details on in them and how to control the alcohol ink look at that one over there and look at the moon one on the background wow that's stunning i love that okay. one hey i'm ready to show you all so how, to you how to do it okay first i'm going to take alcohol and just smear it make a mess and what it is is your alcohol will float on top of alcohol if and i'm going to show you what both does okay so if i take paint alcohol on a surface you see how it moves if I put it on top of alcohol do you see how it floats different right now I'm gonna use the new ball I don't know what he calls it I have to look it up ball. I anyway go straight down otherwise it looks like everybody else's we're gonna give our flower some personality and blow it slowly and out of the center keep pushing it where you want so all those that love to noodle which is everybody I know you can play in this for a while. Don't rush. Go slow. You can always add more alcohol, okay? So the best thing for getting personality in your rose or flower or whatever it turns out to be is walk out of the center and let it do whatever it wants to do. It looks like a hibiscus already. See? That's what I mean. Anybody can do it. And I'll go back into the center. But stay Anybody in the center. Anybody who is, I tried and it doesn't work. You just need a little practice. I guess. It's not anything like that. <laughs> And I'm just blowing it so it'll dry out. The edges get a little cute. See that? Very yeah. nice. Okay, so what I want to do now is just put another layer of alcohol on here so I can show you how, let's say you didn't like it. You put another thing of alcohol, dead center, blow out. Look how I'm getting another layer. Now it's looking like a rose, huh? But as I do this, it'll change again. It'll morph. It's constantly morphing. It's like painting with the universe, painting with the gods. Wow. Look at that. It's not the usual you see everywhere. This has personality. It does. It now, has layers yeah. Now, I want to show you this. This is the alcohol ink alloy. And I put it in my palette, and it's dry. But if I take my brush and put a little alcohol in it, it reconstitutes it, it comes right back to life. Nothing's all oh, wait, wasted. I didn't see that. Sorry. Yeah. I was showing the other flower. So let's try it again. So it was dry. All, it usually was, her palette is dry. My I will usually use start off with a dry palette. Sometimes I use it wet. Never say ever. But when it dries, you can bring it actually up on your palette and let it dry out up there and then come scoop it up. But I want in this case, I want it juicy because I want to put a drop in the middle. On top of what's there, it's still kind of wet. And again, start in the center and work it out. So it's all kind of dried out on me. So no worries. You go into alcohol, give it a little tap. It's a little lot of alcohol. Put it out in there. And blow out of the center. And now what I want to show you, do you see the crust that's forming on the edge? Mm -hmm. Now, I can keep putting alcohol and get that to go where I want. And I want to show you one just offhand right now on how I was able to push it to an edge so it got a nice crust. You can change anything, but that one, I did that. And this one here, I did it a little, let it be soft. 
but it's like little chunks of metal. It's not like the mixatives that would have mixed with it. It sits like almost on top. So there's, there is a difference. It's not just the same stuff in a different type of a way. So I'm going to show you how I manipulate it so you see a little more. Because it's like magic. Let's say I want it over here. Look how you can actually put a line. And then come back. Just clean out some of that. Put a little alcohol down. See how it's building a bead? So you can control it. I'm a big control freak, huh? Mm -hmm. You see how I can control that better? Yes. So, so you can control alcohol ink, and you can control the alloys. If I want to play with it, I can. I'm not like, oh, I can only blow it. No, I can paint with it. Look at how that's going in and becoming a little cupped in the center. Look how lovely that is. Done. Make another flower. It took, what, 10 minutes? You know, you can add more and more and more and more. How beautiful. So let's do a bud for fun, huh? This one has alloy mix because it was on my brush and you can see how it floats in there. Look how pretty that is. I'll just make a couple buds. The big thing when you're making buds is make them different sizes. Okay? It doesn't matter what the heck the colors are. Just make them different sizes. Let it blow. If you want to make it fancy, you can you can blow them. It's easier to blow away from you than it is to blow towards you, so I would suggest doing that. This one has a little petal coming out. I like it. I'm leaving it. And that's what I mean by working with the universe. It does things on its own. And you decide if you want it. If you don't like it, I can use my brush anytime I want and make a point on it. There, bud. You want it a little bit sharper focus? Bud. You want a petal coming out? Put it in front of this guy? Do it. Do whatever you want. Because you can with this particular paint. You know? So you, a lot of students will put this down. All they have to do is break it up and it looks pretty. It's not that, that it's all about breaking things up, you know. It's the break up. Yeah, give it a little puff and that's always nice. And I'm going to steal some of this alloy and just bring it up here. You I can re-wet it. You can reconstitute it with alcohol. So now... If you can think it, it's almost like if you can think it, you can do it. <laughs> I'm going to put a little alloy there and just put a little more alcohol in it. I like to work really slowly in layers. Just take your time. It really looks beautiful. Oh, I'm patient. That's my problem. Yeah, slow down. Slow down. <laughs> Look how beautiful that this is. This is beautiful. And I'm just going to break up those stems a little. We'll make a rose out of this. So this is only what? Alloy, one color. It was bubble gum. Or gumball. Gumball. Sorry. And um, I'll make a little... See how I just damp brush? I can make a little petals. Just starting to open up. This one here, I'm see, I can see them. Because there's a dark line. Yeah. I'm just and highlighting. If you add a different so. color, like green, for example, okay. will, it, will it like mix too much yes. with the purple? I mean, yeah, with the, with the red. Yeah, yeah, it would. So you got to be careful with red and green because what do you get? You get yeah, brown. Yeah. So you get, you get a little theory. It helps you. But I could use a little purple. You know, if you're using a palette and you're not sure what the colors are, just paint the side. Oh, okay. Because you can't tell. But if you use the palette all the time and you use a limited palette so and you know where your again. paintings are. <laughs> Just yeah. paint the side. Just paint the side if you don't know the color of what it is. You'll always know. But when you use a limited palette and you always put the paint in the same spot, you automatically wow. know what all those colors are. So let's, like, let's put a little of that purpley color in here. Beautiful. And if you notice your paintings looking a little cartoony, just add another value, but the another color, but it's got to be the same value. Like if I put the dock here, that don't look good. But if I put it where it's dark, it looks wonderful. Okay, so that's a good little tip for a technique. And all I have to do to fix that is lift it off. So you're never stuck. 
The only thing is, is Yupo does stain a little bit. Yeah. But um, yeah. I'll show you a little a trick on that. And see how that you can see that dark line right there. Mm -hmm. If you just come and make a light spot, look at that. You get instant that petal, instant freebie. We don't work hard, right? We just make beautiful things. Beautiful. So I'm going to put a little green in there to kind of finish it off. There's a little green. And as you can see, I'm not real a believer of plain ink. I mean, you know, I mix everything. So I'm just going to smash down some ink. Oh, okay. It's going to turn into a bunch of leaves, believe it or not. Where are they? I don't know. I'm just going to put some alcohol in it, let it move. I'm going to puff it. You tell me where the leaves are. Instant leaves, right? Everywhere. Yeah. I keep it away from my flower. I'll bring them in later. To see how that is? Now I'll tap off to get rid of the excess and bring them in where I want. Now I'm not disrupting my flower. But I don't want my flower looking like color forms, for those who know what color forms are. You have to be old. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what they are. You're so mm -hmm. young. See how I soften the edge? It, it just keeps them from looking like somebody stuck on a flower. Oh, like, okay. Oh, I see. Too. So see how I soften and how it blends into the picture? And it works really nice. Doesn't that look a lot better? Yeah. I mean, you know. So, and then here's a flower. Here's a leaf. Can you see the petal? The little uh, leaf. You make a vine. Everybody knows that's a leaf. There's a leaf there. There's a leaf right here poking out. So I'll darken underneath and maybe carve it out a little bit more. So the ink is giving me. Look at that leaf right there. Mm -hmm. Do you see it? Yeah. Right there with that. Yeah. You can just put a vein in there. Everybody's going to see it. Don't work so hard. Everybody overthinks that we do, we do. But uh, after the, about a million years, I uh, got this man in my head that says, are you seriously thinking anybody's gonna see that? Move on. <laughs> and, I, and I do, I move on and then I, you can always come back and change it, but listen for that voice. A lot of people hear it now, but a lot of people tell me they hear me in their head <laughs> saying, change your color, change your color. Do you see how lovely that looks? Yeah. I want that to be softened to go in the background, so I just muck it up. See that? Yeah. And then this, I don't care. This is this is a flower, but nobody needs to know all the information because this is where I want them to look. Right. So I want that to be soft. I might add a little green into it. Make a mess. If you can scribble, you're going to make beautiful art. But if you sit there and go, you know, it just doesn't look as nice for my technique. There's nothing wrong with some illustration, but that I'm just not into I'm more of an artsy, sketchy girl. Look how lovely that is. Come on, that's beautiful. Not that I'm honking my horn. I think it's the ink that makes it beautiful. I just kind of push it around where I want it. So, there you go. It's beautiful. Soften it up. When I make a mess like this, it just becomes a mess. Get one of these, it'll like help a, you. Yeah, you know. And you know what? So Let it list. dry. Go slower. You might be just going a little bit too fast. We're probably for sure overthinking it. Yeah. You are, sure. yeah. Look at that leaf. Look at those leaves right there. I didn't even Beautiful. add those, right? Look at that. There's a definite rose up there. Come on. Beautiful. Did I add that? No, I just added alcohol and let it smush. <laughs> so anybody can do it. It's just be confident. You know when it looks good. And if someone says, you know what, your painting looks good, you don't say, no, it's it's not that great, right? You know how we do that, right? Yes. Come on, you know you, you all do that. Oh, yeah. You say, no, thanks so much. I really worked hard. And then they're going to say, hey, how much is that? <laughs> and you say, hey, that's 35 bucks. So don't make them 200. The people ain't going to buy it. Right. But you make it where they can afford it, they're going to buy it. Because your art is beautiful. So come to my YouTube channel, join my Facebook page, and all those things. And I'm going to teach you as much as I can, and it's all for free. So please, happy painting, everybody. Thank you so much, Sharon. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank Bye. You. Bye.